way. I'm prepped. Are you prepped? Cool. Okay. Very cool. Way cool. Three, two, one. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It has been our stream today on the 29th of August 2022. That is correct. It's the last, well, it's the end of August tomorrow, as in the 30th of August, and then it's September on Wednesday. And on top of that, uh, when I was a young lad, and they were like, here's the seasons, they always say September, October, November is spring. Or well, I guess here at Southern Hemisphere it's spring. Or the Hemisphere it's fall or autumn, depending on who you are. Uh, point is, apparently it's not cold anymore. Then I go outside and it's still freezing because we're in La Nina season here. Down in Australia, so. What's up, Diggs? How's it going? Uh, so yeah, no, it's, uh, it's nice, cool, uh, weather here in Australia. It's still, still cool, but that's okay. Uh, I thought you all would enjoy this stream because it is a nice stream to remind you of the, the joys of the outside weather. So how about, let's see how smooth I can make this transition. Look at that. Beautiful. Tomb Raider 2, and in particular, last stream I started the game, and for some reason I, uh, my save times have fixed themselves, so I don't know. In the last stream, uh, I started the game. Lara, uh, wandered into, uh, the Great Wall of China, and, uh, then she was like, Oh, I can't open the door, but there's a guy called Bartley who lives in Venice, so I'm gonna find him. And then, uh, anyway, she somehow stumbled upon, uh, a plane got decked in the back of the head, and now she's uh, a stowaway on this ship. And as a stowaway, the first thing you have to do is explore, and realize that they don't, <laughs> they didn't really keep her in very well. There was a switch that opened her cell from the inside. They left that in there. So, uh, yeah. Uh, those of you who, uh, remember the last stream, uh, I, uh, oh, well, not, it's only open for a little bit. Uh, those who remember the last stream, uh, I stayed up too, too long after my bedtime, uh, to play the Tuning Raider, and, uh, so this stream, well, I, the same rules apply. I'm gonna finish a level after two hours call it there, but when will that be? I don't know. Um, I kind of anticipate this will take five, four or five streams. Man, I should do the first game in three streams, and I'm really kind of surprised on that one. Uh, but I know the first game more. Um, this one, like, I'll try my best. Uh, so I think if I move those boxes, and in particular, if I can get this one into the alley behind me, then I don't have to climb on anything. I think I'll make this whole bit, bit easier. So why don't we... Whoop, whoop. Let's pull it back out. Uh, I started playing um, Ocarina of Time again. And uh, Ocarina of Time in particular is... Uh, it's It too has a lot of box pushing puzzles. And I feel like that's a fun trend of the 90s. They all kind of had these box pushing puzzles. Um, let's pull the switch. Turn around, start running already, because you can technically move while the camera's moved away from Lara. And... Easy source. <laughs> and, uh, immediately after, immediately as I, as I, uh, walk outside, they set off the sirens and two dudes with billy clubs come at you. Now, fortunately, they don't have guns. Unfortunately, I don't have my guns. Lara's guns have been taken, so... Oh, well, okay, never mind, I take back the gun thing. Uh, so let's go into this room and... Let's not go into this room, let's just proceed to avoid getting shot. Uh... This is another one of those levels where I've got the rough idea in my head, but I don't have the actual idea, so I'm currently, like, toying around my head. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember. So here's a boat. Oh, not a boat. Here's a plane. The whole point is that this is the plane that you boarded at the beginning. Uh, you gotta watch out for that fan there. Uh, this is the, yeah, the plane that you boarded at the end of the last level. Um, and you just kind of got thrown into the closest cell. But, on the underside here is the closed door. 
cool. Uh, the cheeky door over there. I, I think I gotta go up to that control room and hit a switch. What do you say? That seems about right. Gosh darn it. This guy's a huge jerk. There's nothing up this ramp, right? No, it's just stairs. Well, sorry, sorry. I... Oh! I'm finding the words, man. I'm finding the words. Uh... Yeah. Leave. Nope. That's not, that's not the button. I swear there was a button up here. I know you can shoot the glass. I don't particularly think shooting the glass helps anyone but yourself. Okay, let's let's load it. Uh, greetings, Blub. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> beginning of the stream. I'm already like uh, questioning my existence, so that's good fun. Uh, off the top of my head, I do remember you had to like hit a switch. It opens the plane, and then that allows you to get your guns. But I'm looking here, I don't exactly see, I mean, unless this is a switch, that doesn't seem like a switch, that's just a siren. This is something, it needs a key, so okay. Or at least Lara said no earlier, I, I didn't manage to get it the second time. Those are two doors, they don't seem to be open, so that's okay, so... It makes sense that you're not running past the guy with the gun. So, somewhere in the water seems like a slightly more likely option. Uh, we've got this ledge over here, which doesn't seem like you can get to it because that's where the doors uh, from around there open up. Uh, this is the plane. It's got an obvious hole at the bottom, which needs to open up somehow. Uh, there's a... There's a vent on the far wall there, and I think if you're standing somewhere... Oh, there's a, there's a switch over there, oh, and, uh... Okay, don't do that. They put a switch! Right next! Right next to the fan. I gotta... You gotta... You gotta be, keep your eyes peeled, apparently, on this level design. You can't... You can't question anything. You, you just gotta go for it, so... Uh... But at least it'll be a nice, fun change in pace, these levels. Uh, even if it is still not tombs. Uh, also, that's fun. The fact that, like, the door next to it opens. So you gotta, like, swim around. And make sure you don't get sucked in. There we go. Whoop. This is, this is a, this is a corridor and a half, I'll tell you that. I love this wall texture, I'll tell you that. It's glorious. Uh, but yeah, no, I hope you've all had a wonderful week uh, before and a wonderful week uh, about to happen. 29th of August is... Well, what, what exactly does happen on the 29th of August? Who knows? Uh... You know, it's kind of, like, mildly ironic. In the first run, the guy shot the glass and I was able to walk out here. So I guess, I guess you just gotta jump on top of the plane. That's not how you jump on top of the plane. That is, uh, that's a bit shocking. Uh, the angle is kind of weird from here, but it almost looks like you can do it. We really just gotta do it with a bit of a diagonal run. This fence is a little awkward. Matt, that, that's a that's a weird one. Okay. Number three is probably uh, you jump over to the other side and then you go up the plane, uh, the wing of the plane. <laughs> of course, I'm going up the plane. It's so like you see here. Well, I preferably not want to jump from here. Climbing? Oh, there's a button. There's a button. There's a button. It's all good. Well, <laughs> I guess I'm not climbing onto the plane, but... Yeah, sure, that does the job. So anyway, yeah, we... Get our way back onto the plane. That, uh, I got knocked off before. 
Hit the button. Sops the propeller. And... Demand a bit of fun backtracking, don't they? The door at the other side is still open, so at least you don't have to rush for any of that. That's some fun Z fighting going on up there. Uh, uh. Don't ask how to get that secret, I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe there's a way to stop the fan. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, no, this, uh, this week has been good fun, nice and chill. Uh, I have taken the, uh, unfortunate glory of playing Metropolis Street Racer again. I think, uh, I played it back in March. Uh, no, no, all, the little green thing there behind it is the secret. So all the secrets in this game are physical, uh, kind of things that you can pick up. And they're all, they all look the same between each level, so you know what's the secret. Um, but then the question is, how do you pick it up? Is you can't just go through the fan there. You gotta, you gotta go some other way. So, uh, this looks a little awkward to do the grab, but I assume this is, this is that. So, <laughs> it makes sense in terms of the mechanics. It doesn't make sense in terms of the looks. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. Look at that. It's El Pistola. Now, we've got the pistols again. They took it away from you for 10 minutes, uh, but it's a kind of interesting uh, thing there. I, they didn't take away... Oh, they do take away the other weapons as well, which is a bit of a shame. <laughs> so, but they don't take the ammo, so at least they're kind enough to do that. Uh, so now that we've got the guns, I guess we can start wrecking the two people and figure out if they're holding a key, which they most likely are. You'd think they would have, like, not kept the guns on the plane. Like, they obviously took it off Lara. There we go. I hope you like sirens and loud, uh, loud machinery noises as well. Oh, look at that. It's a, what is that? Is that yellow pass card? It's it's a circuit board on the other side. It's a full on, like, I don't know. I, I love like computer chips in the 90s where it's just like, things are like these massive, like just boards. Okay, so probably the yellow pass card goes into the yellow slot. And the level continues. After taking out some dudes. Here we go. Okay. Hopefully I don't get attacked by some dogs. I believe... Well, this is the living quarters level, so it's actually, uh... I believe this is central... Oh, there's a dog there. There's a guy with a gun. I'll get a circle straight. Meanwhile, I get mauled by a dog. Okay, there we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm not absolutely struggling to dogs this stream. Uh -huh. Cool. Uh, but yeah, no, I played Metropolis Street Racer uh, probably March last year, and I was doing streams back then, but I decided to play it again because uh, it's got the retro achievement set um, added in February this year. And on top of that, who knows? Maybe there's something different about it. And uh, it's kind of interesting on a replay through. So Metropolis Street Racer is a... Um, uh, a, a realistic driving game. Not exactly, uh, you know, it's not the most ultra realistic, but it's certainly, you know, like real licensed cars, that kind of stuff. And you drive around in three cities. Now the cities, uh, each of the events are all like circuits in the city, but they did the proper work of, uh, you know, putting barriers and signs all around uh, to tell you where to go. And I really appreciate that nearly every event is a different layout in the city. Uh, you'll definitely be seeing the same corners over and over again. That's some terrifying music again. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> the best part about that music is that it ends right there. Oh, there's another guy. He decided that going walking down the ramp is not the way to go. I love these doors that you can just open. Uh -huh. They don't 
close. They don't... Like, you just open them, you know? You just go up to them, spin them around, they open up. Hopefully there's no one on the inside. There's someone on the inside, back up. Uh, so yeah, it's got about 30 or so licensed cars, uh, but one kind of issue with the game is that uh, a lot of the cars perform the same. Definitely the last cars in the game are faster than the earlier cars in the game, but you'll definitely find that the AI rubber bands so hard that it doesn't matter too much. It matters a little bit, but not too much. Um, uh, the other kind of interesting idea about the game is that uh, each event is uh, broken down into... Uh, this is very neat as well. We got a new weapon. It's the... Uh, the harpoon gun. Very cool. Uh, the harpoon gun will come into use later on because you can shoot it underwater. I don't think there's really anything else hiding here. I hate these, like, high ledges here because who knows what's up them. Well, there's a switch up this one, so that doesn't even help. That doesn't even help my case. Oh boy, what's up here? Uh, yeah, it's got this uh, system in the game called Kudos, and basically, uh, in order to unlock events, you acquire Kudos, and uh, I was going to reach up that way, but I guess i got to go this way. Oh, yep, i got to go that way. Cool. Thanks for closing on me, game. Appreciate it. Uh, There's a system called Kudos, so uh, each event... It's like, oh, you gotta beat this time on the track, but then it also lets you uh, set yourself an even quicker time ahead of, you know, attempting it. And the higher, the or the harder the, the challenge that you set yourself is, the more kudos you get at, as a reward. And on top of that, you get more kudos when you uh, do drifts, and you lose kudos if you tag, if you, like, bump at the walls or bump to other cars. Um, so it's a nice little risk-reward system. Definitely isn't risk-reward by the end of the game. That is a wonderful beginner's trap, by the way. That is a wonderful beginner's trap, because no way are you going to know that that slope, you can't grab it from this side. You just gotta, you just gotta know. You could have at least made me fall onto the fire as well. But no, it's like... Uh, classic Tomb Raider. Classic Tomb Raider. Never gets old. Or at least Lara's hair never gets old. Um, so it's, yeah, but it's kind of near the beginning of the game where it's like you've got a bunch of cars, you're trying to figure out which one controls the best for you. Uh, oh, you um, and, uh, and you're trying to get more kudos. You're trying to beat your scores on each level to get more of the kudos to continue on. Eventually, you'll figure out which cards are, like, really good, and you can start kind of acing more and more challenges. Um, I also find that, like, one design issue is that the amount of kudos you get for drifting is significantly higher than the amount of kudos you get for setting yourself hard challenges. And so, there's one-on-one -on -one style events where you can set the amount of head start your opponent gets, but you can also set it so that the opponent, uh... Oh, I guess you just gotta jump. I guess I just gotta yeah, jump it. Uh, you can set the head start to negative 60 seconds, as in you start a whole minute before your opponent. It makes all those levels incredibly easy. You can pretty much beat them in whatever car against whatever car. Um, and you can spend your time just kind of drifting and gaining a lot of points like that. Uh, so there's a bit of that going on, but uh, the only thing that uh, the Retro Achievement set does is that it gives you a specific challenge for each car so i'll say on this level with this car uh you know beat this certain score and sometimes it's pretty much the bare minimum and that car is kind of barely pushing by but sometimes it's a bit extra like oh okay like this challenge is 58 seconds but you've got to beat it in 52 or something like that um, but it does give you a reason to actually drive all the cars so i thought that's kind of neat uh including the uh the secret vehicles like the lawn mowers later on good fun but uh casually i'd recommend the game just in general it's a great mm -hmm. game uh 
it's got a really good soundtrack. I forgot one of the songs is uh is uh, intermission music, which is nice. Um, original soundtrack too. It's not even uh, licensed. It's by the the Sonic R guy, who I always keep forgetting his name, but it's a wonderful game. I like it. The only issue is that the uh, the time of day is set to your real time, and you can set the time zone at the beginning of the game to effectively set the um, uh, you know, like what the actual time is, but there's three cities in the game. This is a secret? Uh -huh. Listen, the fan, the fan one I looked at and I was like, I don't know what's going on there. This, like it's a cool like, like nook at the level, but uh, what's there to do up there? Who knows? Uh, there's a switch down here. Okay. Oh, maybe this opens. Curious. Wait, this was... This room. Yeah, wait a minute. This was this room. Oh! Oh, I get it. I think I get it. Can I see it from here? Oh, I thought the fan stopped. Nope. Don't get it. Oh well. Yeah, let's break our way back in, and then I can go left. Uh, yeah, no, really good game. The only, I guess, the only other thing is that it's a Dreamcast-only game, and I guess, yeah, it's a it's a Sega published game. Um, the devs later went on to create uh, Project Gotham Racing, uh, and the first game kind of reuses a lot of, in fact, it reuses all the environments from. Metropolis Street Racer, but the structure of the game is different. And I kind of like just how it is in Metropolis Street Racer. That guy's got a gun. He's got a gun. Okay. Let's get these two fools. I'll definitely say this level's a lot more digestible. You have that first area where you had to get the yellow key, and then you got the second area where you get the red key. That second area because I had gone thrifty, and now it's like I just gotta continue on. I kind of like I always get a little bit daunted by some of the levels in uh, these Tomb Raiders, but then it's like I don't know, there's a, there's a, quite a number of them where they are pretty approachable. They're not like that weird. Hello, Mr. Crip. How are you doing? Called me by my proper name. Is that my... I don't even know. Uh -huh. uh, so there's a wonderful siren going on, and I believe the level actually isn't too much longer. It's just uh, beyond this pit. It's just a... Uh, it's a pit. Uh, so... I think I know it off the top of my head, but this is like the most obnoxious like box in the entire game. So you see, you saw how the box was visible from the other. End. You stole that first Ender Dragon kill from the of SMP. Ah, oh, nice, nice. It's always good to steal everyone's Ender Dragon. Relish in owning that egg. So you push that box here, and then you can pull it over here. But you can't pull it again because it's off the edge of the level. They are soothing sirens. Unfortunately, I don't think they're on the next level, so... You gotta... <laughs> you gotta walk back here and push it one last time. <sighs> Broke the rules, but that was the funniest stuff you saw that month. Oh, it's great. I... I always love... The reactions people have to Minecraft servers. So there's, there's etiquette, of sure, of course, but it's also just like, I don't know, it's just the Ender Dragon, but... There we go. Okay, and now I feel like this jump I'm probably gonna do a bit funky, but we'll see where it goes. Ooh. Oh, that works. Why does this go up? Why does this, like. Whoa! That was a bit spooky. That guy just uh -huh. came out of... Uh, I don't know, it was just chilling down there. That was 
too busy looking at whatever was above here. I don't think it, oh, it, it is something. I guess I'll drop down here from later, probably. I do like the ambience. I do like just the sound of machinery and metal in particular. There you go. So you turn the lever and the water turns on. But what is this? You need another, another one for green. Uh, and this glass is uh, impervious to bullets. Or are you going to get banned? Right, so what you're saying is that I'm going to get banned for opening portal no matter what. And the dragon killed you. Nice. Nice. I can never like falter like the way people play Minecraft because it's just like everyone plays it in such a different way. So now you can swim to the other side, climb out, hopefully no one tries to gun me down. Ah, but I think here's your problem is that now you've got to fill the water on the other side. And uh, well there is no water on the other side. A bit bizarre. Okay, sure. I can't remember the last time I've done a, a Minecraft multiplayer though. It's kind of weird that you can't jump that. Okay. I think you can definitely tweak the, the switch um, to change the water back the other way. And I think the way you do it is you get that green circuit board, put it in there uh, so that this door opens, which allows you to then flip the switch and walk out on this side, but now I'm curious, it's like, what's going on up there? Because it's not liking me jumping over these pipes, but I feel like you should be able to jump over the pipes. Like that, so. Oh look, a switch. There you go, trap door in the green room. I'll need to do that pro jump again. Nice. Uh, so, so there are uh, two levels on this boat before we enter the next kind of world, which the first game was nice and balanced. You could kind of like each of the, I, I called it a world, but you know what I mean, where it's like each of the main environments of the game reasonably spill along. Here it's like you got one level in China, three levels in, in Venice, one level, or two levels on the ship. It's gonna be four levels afterwards. Uh, oh, I forgot this is part of the same level, isn't it? This area down here. This area always throws me off. Because it's a, it's a miasma of... Miasma? That's not the word. But like, it's a, it's a real bizarre, like, bit of level down here. So, you can see there's these ledges. Like, these high-up ledges. That, but, but they're all, like, obscured by... Uh, these pillars and then you got guys with harpoons in the water they'll reset the entire they're gonna reset the entire server because because you killed the ender dragon just like creative mode spawn one in call it a day you gotta do that as well like a little bit of an odd jump there don't think the harpoon guy can really get you but these are very odd jumps i'll tell you that and that's a guy over there I'll teach him. Stream- Oh, was it a streamer's server? Wait, which server was this? You said. Private SMP. Is that a guy? I actually- I don't know my, my Minecraft streamers anymore. I know Dream and that's it because Dream is a meme. Uh, I think you've actually got to drop down. I think there is something down below. So you'd end up climbing this ladder from there, so, well, let's drop down, and then panic a little bit, because they've got dudes with a harpoon shooting me, a harpoon shot would actually be really painful, okay, get out of the water, let's see if I can hit him from here, they are directly underneath me, stream alerts with six other guys who do, ah, oh, I, that's the other thing, and I, like, you know, if people are playing co-op, you know, accept that other people are going to do the stuff that you didn't do. 
living alone without 100 mending on every item. Oh, was that just another secret? Uh -huh. Is that a... That's a... They, they spawned dudes on the secret platform. Why? Why'd they do this to me? Imagine his reaction to this situation. Oh, did he react to it on stream? You gotta link it to me. Link it to me, bro. <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be good if uh, it's got a good stream reaction. I am very like chaotic neutral in this. I'm just like, you know, it's it's Minecraft. You gotta have some chaos here and there. What's the point of Minecraft if everything goes smoothly? I'm gonna pull out a mate of mine. You know, he plays Minecraft with the mob destruction off keep inventory on. He has real life right now. Whoa. Like, keep inventory off? Come on, I want to be able to lose my stuff. That makes the pain so much worse. Okay, so I didn't see anything down below but uh, harpooners and a secret. Uh, just, just for note again. Oh, look, a shotgun. Just for note again. There's no direct reward or really any reward in this game for getting all the secrets. Uh, but one thing to note: this game has uh, one of those uh, gold edition uh, level packs, similar to the first game. So it's just called Tomb Raider 2 Gold, not Tomb Raider Unfinished Business, uh, like the last one. Am I hitting that guy? Is he in range? I don't think he's in range. Done. Um, and uh, that level pack, it's another four levels, but it's also got a secret level if you manage to get all the secrets in that, uh, that level pack. Um, which is, uh, I guess it does the same thing of three secrets per level, so... Uh, I'll definitely show off that level pack. I don't know if I'm going to exactly get all the secrets, but uh, the, the worst case is you just download a save file that begins at the beginning of the secret level. Because um, it's a fun secret level. And also, yeah, secret levels. That's uh, something that we haven't explored in a while. Last week I left a chest with a banner, Chaos Clowns, an egg and a note. See you soon. Now I tried to open the end. Uh, it opens and after killing the dragon and soul man, put the same banner in place where the egg should be. Nice. Also, I love the sirens going off after picking up the green... green thing. This makes me feel like I gotta run the entire, like, gauntlet but backwards. But I'm also curious if I can make the jump. I don't... it doesn't feel like you can. Mm, yeah, no, especially not. Hey, look, back to the ladder. Back to the ladder again. Gosh, the harpooners, I tell you, man. Harpoons as a weapon, like, what was, like, the first, like, piece of media where people shot harpoons at p other people and not just, like, you know, jaws of sharks? I'm pretty sure, like, James Bond Thunderball did it. People were shooting harpoons at each other. Probably exists older. Mankind has learned that anything that hurts will be used against them. So, you know, <laughs> the harpoon gun. Very impractical, but it hurts. It's like nail guns, you know? It's like, yeah, like a nail gun will hurt. It's got a gun in the name. The reaction in the Discord server is wine for the ears. Oh. I, shall, I shall salute you, chef kiss. He has harvested such bountiful salt for this upcoming spring. I remember my mates got very upset when, uh... I remember one time, uh, we were playing, like, with Industrial Craft 2 ages ago, and someone, not me, but someone, uh, like, went into someone else's base, they had a nuclear reactor, and they just, like, changed the 
like the config and the nuclear reactor blew up and their entire base went with it. And, uh, let's just say they weren't very happy. Already the pulse has risen. How are the others at least spending the last week of summer? Uh, well, here, here down on. Oh. Am I an idiot because I slid down into this room and now I'm trying to figure out off the top of my head how do you unslide down this room? There wasn't something at the far end and I just completely ignored it, right? But I don't see anything down here and I didn't really spot anything as I was walking up there. Ah, uh, that. Mm, I'm an idiot. I just saw it. So it's on that wall on my right, now on my back. Oh, now I gotta go past the harpooners again. Uh, yeah, no, here in here in Sydney it's been cold, so and sneezy. Hold on. Nice. Gotta have that on on uh, on stream sneeze, you know. Go climbing up. I will say one one thing if we're gonna if we're gonna comment on Lara's physique is how like harsh a shadow jump happens between her elbows and her knees. Like I have no idea what exactly they've done to create that effect, because it's like, it's obviously just... I think it's just garage shading, like, really just kicking in. It's just, because that's where all the vertices are. So it's, like, approximated somewhere in between. It's like, yeah, okay, it's light in the middle, and then it's dark on the edge. And because it's a simple model, like, that's just how it works. Garage shading is just... Well, uh, M, again, thrown into the room with no visible way to get out. Meanwhile, I sit and think about how long I'll be banned if he has time at all. Listen, you're the one living rent-free in their heads, so... You got the free real estate here. Then you just rinse and repeat and do it again. As long as it's not version 1.19, because you could actually get, like, a uh, block listed on that one. On version 1.19. Uh, I always can say, oh, that answers the question of like how you get out of there. But I should probably heal before I'm about to take another hit. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh, get, get, get him. Okay. There we go. Okay, well, not nope, that switch. Actually, yes, that switch. So put the green pass card in. You realize that the ban was secured. Decided to kill the dragon before leaving the sir. You can just respawn the dragon, bro. Go onto the map files, delete the end. Just do it again. Put himself in the history of the dumbest people on this earth. Listen, dumb people don't make history. Only smart people. So swim down here, and I believe this is the end of the level. Oh. You gotta throw a switch. One last switch. And the door opens and reveals... A staircase. And there we go, that's the level. That actually wasn't too bad. Uh, so this is now the diving area. I'm going to try and do a different save per level just because uh, it will make me doing screenshots a lot easier. Uh, there's a death trap down there. That's cool. Dumb people does not make history crazy one do. Exactly. 
be the person others only aspire to be, you know? Hit the button, and the fan stopped. I wish I figured that one out on the last level to get that one last secret. So what's going on back here? They put flares. Oh, oh wait, no, that's not flares, that's grenades. Cool. But like, there's grenades all the way back there, really? I guess it's a bit too obvious for a secret. Especially when, like, everyone saw the last one. There's no way you can not see the last one. That's okay. Where's this lever? What's this doing down here? Probably opens a door over here just to, just to prevent you from, like, jumping this. Yeah, that's a door there. Okay, more dudes. Everywhere. Do you like dudes? Because that's what this level is. More of them. They're just leaving, and there's a guy on my side. Look at him one-handing the shotgun. Got himself rifles, like, jeez. Jeez, they're, they're going... They're going gutsy against Lara, and then they put too many health kits. Uh, also, I guess I've got the Uzis again. Because they dropped an Uzi, so that's cool. So I've, uh, I've still yet to get the M16 or my grenade launcher. I'll get there. Uh, what is this lead? Okay, this is the water pit that was directly between here. Cool, but is there a path on the other side? No. And I think I gotta do some platforming. Uh, uh, so here's something kind of interesting. I've, uh, I've started learning uh, Rustlang, the programming language, the one that keeps getting touted in those Stack Overflow surveys. And uh, it seems rather interesting. Um, at least for the moment. I'm going through the tutorial on their website, but, uh, um, I appreciate that this kills Lara. Like, ugh. Rasta, yeah. Um, so, uh, I currently, like, it's got, like, crazy hype for some reason. The, so the Stack Overflow surveys asking for, like, what what's the language that developers love the most? For some odd reason, Rust is just, like, ridiculously, like, represented. It's really high up for some reason. Um, uh, I am personally a C-sharp guy. I do like my C-sharp. Um, right, let's see if I can find this. Here we go. I think I'm grabbing the ledge on this one. And then if I hug the ledge here... For this to come up behind me. Uh, there we go. So uh, right now, uh, I, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Um, so right now, I've done a simple program as part of the tutorial, which is uh, you make a little guessing game program. So the program starts. It makes a, it picks a random number between one and a hundred. You guess the number, and until you get it, it tells you if you're lower or higher than it. And then once you do get it, it tells you you got it, and it exits. Real simple. The code is. Real, real simple, like, I've been programming for a while, it makes sense to me, uh, but there's some kind of neat things about the language already that I like. Uh, I like the idea of um, explicit mutability, so it's like, you, like, yeah, you, you, you've got your bit of code that takes your user input and converts it into an integer, and you save that into a variable, but uh, you've got to explicitly declare, nice secret by the way, You've got to explicitly declare that that variable is mutable, uh -huh. as in you can write into it. Otherwise, uh, it's you know immutable by default, and it tells you off for doing that. And I'm like, you know what? That actually makes sense. Like, there's a lot of times when you kind of don't want immutable. Sorry, you, you you do want immutability, and I fall into the acid, and Lara's disintegrating into dust. That's fun. Uh, so I kind of like that as an idea. Uh, 
What else? I really liked uh, how um, when I did the integer comparison, uh, there's a you can do the comparison um, kind of function. It's like the spaceship operator basically, where it's like, is it less than, greater than, or equal to? Rules doesn't tell anything about the band for opening ball. Well, there you go. It's mod abuse. What a thrill. Of darkness and darkness. <laughs> One day I will play Metal Gear Solid 3. And yes, by the way, you did see that there's a, uh, like a gap somewhere behind Lara. And I have no idea where it is. I guess we just climb to the top and then try and take some guesses. So, uh. So yeah, so I, I did the comparison, and then from the result, I could do a, uh, a switch case, kind of just like, you know, what to do, purely based off the less than, the equal, and the greater than cases. Um, and uh, on top of that, the, the equals case, you do a print, you win, and then you break out of your loop that's uh, doing your, um, uh, you know, like forcing the user to input again. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's quite neat. Uh, C Sharp's got the switch expressions, but they're usually just like for quick, like one liner, and often for assignments. Um, often for that. So they're not 100% uh, as versatile as the Rust ones, so that's okay. Um, and yeah, because things return result objects quite a bunch. Like uh, when I read a line in, it returns a result, but it's got an input parameter um, uh -huh. where you pass in a reference to string that you want to uh -huh. store the, the data to uh, and the result uh, is nice because then yeah you could go well if it's a failure you do dot accept and, uh, or sorry dot expect and then uh, you can basically go yeah like actually throw an, expect, uh, an exception if it's, this, uh, if it's a failure oh yeah this room I hate this room I I hate that room so much I saved it Okay, I saved at the top. I was like, I didn't save at the bottom of that ladder, did I? Uh-huh. Is, that is another one of those rooms where it's like, you don't really know what you're looking for until you just go in. Uh-huh. Tomb Raider, yeah, it's got a lot of those beginner's traps. It's got a lot of just, like, you can't see the level design. So what you're supposed to do here is you grab onto this ledge, then you drop down, grab the ledge below. And then the guy's already shooting you, so you can stand here. He's got a rifle as part of his model, and he drops what? Oh, did he uh -huh. drop the... I think he dropped the automatic pistols. He did drop the automatic pistols. Oh, okay. Good on him. Uh, so yeah, I believe if you drop down below, I think that's actually what puts you halfway. And I need to drop down below anyways. Sick. It's a very bizarre room. Hey, lovely sloped room. <laughs> now I'm double curious. Uh, yeah, I haven't done too much rust. Uh, the uh, I'm following up with a group of mates, and we're going really like slowly through this course. So I guess uh. If you all want to follow along, uh, maybe I should chuck the the ebook in the description to the YouTube VOD. Maybe I should do that. If it's not there, yell at me. I'll put it in there. But I'm pretty sure it's just the one off the the Russ Lang website. Uh, so yeah, no, it's um, it's pretty neat. And then uh, yeah, I was just like, I'm just gonna compare it to doing it in C sharp and. I thought the real interesting thing was, uh, like, both C Sharp and uh, Rust operate off uh, project files, and they've got a command line tool to make it really easy to start a new project. For C Sharp, it's .NET new, and for Rust, it's Cargo new, and then to run it, brace yourself, it's .NET run and Cargo run. There's the blue down there. What's the intended way to get that? I guess I've got the the hole here. 
kind of indicate that, but that looks like a... Oh, I was going to say, like, that looks like a wild jump, unless you jump further. So. Kind of interesting. Slope back at me. Yeah. Then you got to do the ladder again. No, 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 no. Uh, so, and, and, and both of them, both of them, the .NET new and the Cargo new, they both make a project that's got a very simple Hello World script. Uh, C Sharp's got a lot of like nice little quality of life things purely to make learning the intro startup like a lot easier. Uh, but it obscures the fact that like, you know, there has to be a top level class with a main function instead it's just like, oh, like if you just leave it, it's like, oh, I gotta send three guys to kill me. Only three? Man, he's skimping out. <clears throat> Are they going to kill you to get the dragon egg? You just got to hide the dragon egg. Or you you pick it up and you throw it into lava. Pure Chad move right there. Full the right armor. Uh... But, uh, yeah, the project files between Rust and C-Sharp are a little different, uh, because they're, uh, Rust, it's a TOML file, and C-Sharp, it's a XML file, but it's a, not a CS proj. Uh, but they're really similar. I still prefer the C-Sharp ones. I think, like, NuGet packages work real simple, and I kind of like the idea of, if I'm downloading a package, why do I need to download a repository of all the packages? Like, I guess, yeah, now I know the existence of every package, but it's also like, oh, no, it's really bulky the first package you download like in that tutorial it's like oh you gotta download the random package um and it's like you gotta download uh, the full yeah the full uh package manager repository also i just forgot this is the guy with the flamethrower he's coming at me Oh, well, it's, it's not coming at me for too much longer. Unfortunately, I don't believe you can pick up the flamethrower. Did he not have a key on him? I just got chased by a guy with a flamethrower and he didn't even have the decency to have a key on him. This looks like a, a box, but it's not. So, um, yeah, you gotta download everything. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it's like I just downloaded a 200 or a 300 meg. Um, yeah, like list of all the packages. I just feel like, eh, I'm probably gonna have to keep downloading more stuff every time I keep checking the packages. So, who knows. And that is a closed door. Cool, okay. So not through here. I'm gonna get very lost if I keep opening all the doors, aren't I? Let's do it. There's a compass. I can I can maybe remember which uh, which rooms I'm in. Uh, I think there's gonna be dudes who kill me in this room. Yep, he's just chilling there. He's just being chilling. Is being chilling a trademark thing? Is that what John Cena was talking about? That and Laugoma, something like that. Uh, so there was a box here. Why is there a box here? Like, you can push it, so there must be some reason why there's a box here. Oh! Oh, I see. I see. Okay, let's push it one more. Alright, so I'm gonna need to pick up a uh, circuit board from somewhere, because Lara's part of like, nah. Um... I think you definitely need that to move up to the other side, and I'm pretty sure you can climb out from- No, you can't climb out from here. Must be a. I don't know. Let's see what's down here. Ah, here we go. There is a guy with a harpoon again. He's come back, and you've got to be kidding. What is this? What is this? I guess I could have gotten out the harpoon as well. The worst part as well is that like. Oh, I just realized I'm gonna swim around here. You ready? It's gonna be another lever. Another lever. 
and that opens the door. Oh, I tapped out. Cool, sick. <laughs> now you saw my desktop. Nice. Don't worry, I prepped my desktop. Some streamers have embarrassing stuff on the desktops. I just have 1024 by 768, so you can't see anything. Uh, oh, I trapped him in there. Okay, cool. But then how do I get out? This is back out the entrance. Oh, okay, cool. Made a history, they're gonna reset the end. <laughs> Go at the end of the day, nice. What's the what's the phrase? Be the be the per was like be the person who others would log off for. It's great. Okay, so now I've opened that door. Hopefully, it's not timed. I don't believe it's timed. Okay, streamer wanted to, uh, to do this in October. Beat him to the punch. Here we go. And they're up the top. And hopefully there's no one up there. Have some soothing alarm sounds again. Alright. Make a break. And who am I shooting? I'm shooting the guy with a gun. I appreciate how far Lara can, like, turn around. Like, I'm running nearly away from this guy. But Lara can still kind of have one, one gun on him. I feel like it's a lot more flexible than the first game. Uh -huh. But I really should compare. Because it's really hard to even, like, feel any difference. Like, the jumping, the swimming, so much of the game feels the same. It's like, you ever play, like, Crash 1 and Crash, Crash Bandicoot 2? Crash 2 is so much more fluid of a game. It just feels so much better. But then, like, yeah, Tomb Raider 1 and 2, they're very similar as games. They don't do too much that's different. There's the circuit board. Is, is it a circuit? I don't know. I'm gonna hit this lever and it's gonna be like mad dash, isn't it? Yep. Well, I am on fire and there was a button on the other side, so how about let's hit the button as well. Uh, so, okay, pull the lever. Jump. Jump. Not really doing that right, am I? So let's just hope that the lever the fire off for a while. Uh -huh. Turn that on. I wonder if I should be falling down the gap. Let's see. Uh -huh. I hit a gun down here. But also the fire is back on. So... Oh! Oh! You see that pro move right there. So pro. Uh, I love like this, by the way. The first game notoriously didn't have any skyboxes because you were indoors the entire game. And then uh, when the unfinished business DLC came out, DLC expansion. It's it's it was a free download as well. Like it, it was just with retail versions. And then there was like, oh, you could just download the levels as well. I shouldn't say DLC. Uh, but it's like, they had to like paint stars on a ceiling to kind of do the effect. But it's like, it's so obviously stars on the ceiling. Uh, I like how this is where I came in from when the door's closed. And that's, yeah, that's another door and that's closed, so... I guess, uh, back out this way. So now I've got the, the circuit board. I can now <laughs> reveal the two guys in there. Sorry, machine chip. It's a machine chip. There we go, open the door next to me. I'm probably gonna get decked, aren't I? Who knows? Oh my gosh! there's water here whereas like <laughs> the, the moment before you know you get burned you get burned real hard 
Aha. And uh, would you look at that? There's harpoon bolts. Uh -huh. right there's also got to be something in the water. Something in the water. I see the little green down there. I see a long tube. I love this, like, just change the lighting, like, the, like, uh, kind of tile. It's just, like, a fun little effect. But that's just, like, this is the look of all water levels in the 90s. This is what they look like. Here's a submarine. It's just down here. Why? We'll figure it out, probably. Let's get some air. I'm probably gonna want it. These scuba divers never come up for air. Uh, yeah. Get him out of here. And you too. Oh, he's making a runner. He's making a runner. I get the... Hi there. Well, they're, they're shooting me, but I'm not shooting them. Now I'm getting them. It's kind of cruel, though. It's like, this is the best way to hit them. Just... Oh, they're chilling there. This is such a high leap as well, but... Cool. Okay. So yeah, I'll tell you more about how Rust goes later on. Uh, for now, it's going fine. Uh, although, I've yet to see the... That wasn't a pun. You know what I mean, it's like, I've, I've yet to... There's another... There's another hot pun, really? I think it's because i got to swim back that way, so... Um, yeah. I always do wonder whether, like, people kind of point to the programming language and then say, like, you know, this is, uh, you know, the best language. And, like, we, I guess we can all have preferences, but, like, ultimately, at the end of the day, like, you know, programming language does what a programming language does. It helps you write the best code you can. Uh, sometimes you're struggling in a certain programming language. I think C++ is certainly one of those. I've tried it, I've used it professionally, and I'm like, you know, like, I change one thing if it breaks the syntax, uh, which is rather easy to do with uh, template metaprogramming. Uh, metaprogramming? Just template programming. Um, you get all these error messages that are just not readable. They don't make sense because they're the errors at the usage of your templates and not the definition of your templates. And you have to extrapolate, like, what, like, specific bit it's uh -huh. actually, like, you know, erroring at. It's, it's a pain. A lot of other, like, you know, of those, uh, ju just-in-time languages. You know, like Java and C-sharp, and, uh, I want to say Go if you don't compile it to native. I love how that moved and you didn't even see it. It was so fast. I believe you could just jump for this. There you go. I mean, it's just a platform, you know? What stops you from going here? That looks really ominous. The saw blade, the, the chip right next to it. Who wouldn't want to, like, reach for this, you know? Like, ah, yes. Lara is really dead. Really, really dead. Who left this on? Who's just like, ah, yes. There you go. What a drop back here. But there's a button, so it's okay. Now you may be wondering, what was I just looking at? I believe that is back at the helicopter room. No, we're gonna need to we're gonna need to put this mystery on hold and walk back to the uh, the helicopter room. Let's 
This area does seem to go on a little bit, but it's not... Oh, hi there. How you doing? How you doing? The shotgunner is not too bad, because... I, I appreciate that you can roll out of fire. Well, not the flamethrower stuff, but like... Out of gunfire, they're more likely to miss when you're doing your leaps. It's good fun. I think it's because they aim kind of like a little bit off, or like, yeah. They aim where you were a little bit earlier, and not where you are right now. So I guess if you're moving quick, that's good. Let's get rid of the doggo. No more doggo. There's another doggo. Yeah, try me, doggo. Try me. Bad doggo. Uh, so yeah, so this has lowered. I appreciate this is one of those uh, levels where it's just like, good thing the camera cuts to where you're looking or else you'd have no idea what you're looking for. Oh, that's fun. Oh, oh. It's a bit close. That's a bit close. That was a little bit close. Did I get him? I did. Okay. Oh, would you look at that? It's a, uh, an, uh, was it machine chip? That's what it was. Uh, also in the grand scheme of level design, uh, this area might look a little familiar, and that's because sound in that room. Interesting. Oh, wait, I need a... No. Not the machine chip, I need a... <laughs> Come back a bit later. Just note it. Uh... Oh, this is facing the right way. That's cool. <laughs> back in this room. Pop the machine chip. I wonder if I could just jump that, yeah. Pop the machine chip in. Stick it in there. Oh, you look at that, the death trap stopped. How fun. <laughs> so I've got a bit of a bit of a topic, and this is one that uh, keeps being a repeat topic uh -huh. of mine. I don't know why. It's, it fascinates me. Uh, this is... I think I might have mentioned the Saints Row reboot last week, and if I didn't... Uh, from the, the reading of it, it's hilarious. It's just like, this is a game that feels like one of those throwaway 2012, uh, I don't think it, okay, well here we go. So Saints Row Reboot is, uh, probably from what I'm reading, it's a throwaway, like 2012 style, collect all the bits, um, kinda, yeah. I don't know, a, a GTA clone. I mean, Saints Row has always been that, but, it's it's the structure of that. I, I don't know how to explain it any other way. Um, also, yeah, what did I just pick up? I picked up the red pass card, of course. So it goes on the, on the, on the, on the um, and uh, it's it's a little buggy. I don't think it's crazy buggy. I've not seen people. I've seen some people talk about the game crashing. So say uh, it had worse grindy overall completion than peak Ubisoft. Yes, yes. Uh, my boy Triple G. Uh, I watched his review. Also, hi there. How you doing? I'm gonna run away. Sorry. He can't chase me all the way, yeah. Uh, that's because I'm on the other side of this room. Cool. Um, yeah, it's got stuff like, uh, you have to, um, like, uh, what is it? This is one kind of mission where it's like you drive a truck and there's barrels in the back of the truck. You have to make sure that the barrels don't explode before you get to your destination. And there's just 14 mm -hmm. of them, and it's literally just a different starting point. But you all you drive to the same spot. Sometimes you're not even getting like attacked. Um, like yeah, you could definitely feel some of the the rinse repeat on a lot of that uh, of those missions, um, just in concept. Uh, and then on top of that, like the actual missions are not inspiring. I feel like GTA 5 is a, a game maybe people will rip on for its online, but just talking about. I have no preference. 
should spill a bit of a moth. <laughs> okay, Marco. Glad to have your heart. <coughs> what do you want? Come stick to your stomach. Tell me, where in monastery should we look? Eh, brother? Those accents are glorious, by the way. This feels like a boss battle, except it's not. It's just two guys with guns. But you can just attack from the other side of the room. Oh, he, he got one hit off. He got. He did get one hit off. I take it back. Um. But yeah, yeah. The 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 rinse repeat kind of design of this one. Um, <laughs> seems very odd and also on top of that I guess a lot of people know like this is Saints Row 2022 the last Saints Row was either Agents of Mayhem in 2017 or more Get Out of Hell in 2015 oh, you are not one of them but you are a monk brother Chen Barkang you have come for me I saw bright lights around me that was gunfire I think it was them who got taken away by it but you are my guide, my path beater to a next incarnation. I have done my time here, haven't I? What are you doing here, in Marco Bartoli? Nothing. I, I led righteous life, here for reasons rooted only in necessary evil, as my father was before me when he bombed Gianni's vessel deep into these waters. Now I'm here, uh, was here, to prevent his son from salvaging the Seraph. The Seraph? You not know my life's work well. You sure you're not here for them? Their Jackanory days are well over. They want the Seraph to unlock a malignant treasure we contain in our monastery in Tibet. Since being stolen by imbecile vagabonds centuries ago, we've been without key to it, relying solely on cleansing of our prayers to keep it subdued. Then the occultist Gianni B acquired it. Oh. Boots Trouble to the head. He breathed life back into ancient belief. One not to be stopped by any amount of head bowing. And now again, it is here. Marco, infected with madness. He has violent mind, but not yet the power to satiate it. So, we reach for our weapons once more. The true detox of evil. Where can you be taking me? I thought this was my big break. Best changes out of rest. Oh, I need one. Ooh. Takes a second bullet to really understand what's going on. Alright, and Lara ducks off. And uh, we take that submarine down down below. go that's the diving area done so as we uh, submerge into the depths obviously there's sharks because sharks swim well beneath the surface of uh, the water there's bajillions of sharks jeez and don't say there were six I can count Is it really easy to like throw people off like a like a one of these just like fan powered fan powered I don't know like little jet powered submarines like I feel like you know they can't move fast enough to really throw you off. That's the other terrifying bit about like submarines it's like if you crash a plane you go down to earth it's terrifying sure you crash a submarine you're going further away from from the atmosphere from uh, the surface so uh, uh so welcome to uh whatever this level is called 40 fathoms what's a fathom i looked it up before the stream it's uh six feet so what you got to do is uh the ship crashes and there's a trail there's a trail of barrels this is a wide open just like bottom of the ocean and you're just like where do i go where, where's the where's where do i go and so the barrels are your key you follow the barrels 
And here we have a wonderful metal ship buried by, uh, I can only presume as uh, sand. It's more than sand, I'll tell you that. Coral. Anyway, there's a little hole in here, so you can swim in. Uh, yes, for the next four levels, Lara will not be wearing shoes. Uh, there will be people out there who will uh, cheer to the heavens on that one. I okay. I don't understand feet, people. Can I? Can I just? Can I just say that it's like it's it's the ickiest thing, man. People, people. Came by me as I can. Yeah, exactly, exactly. These are like these are real polygonal feet, man. If you thought if you thought triangle boots were bad, like these feet are like, you know, they're like spades. So I pull the lever, swim down a little bit, and uh, don't do that. Don't do that. I probably should have gone for a breather earlier. Whoops, I was not paying attention. I was just like, oh, I can just keep going. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> And there is a breather spot in the middle. Somehow that ship submerged for how long? That guy said his father sunk the ship. Uh, so, not too long. But definitely, like, I don't know, a couple of decades at least. And that water is, that oxygen is still there. I guess, does the oxygen react with anything? Like, if it's just trapped there, does it ever go? The amount of force to push the oxygen out is uh, too great. The only thing you gotta watch out for is that there's uh, sharks. Uh, some that come up behind you, and I think there was one in front of me. So, you gotta watch out for the sharks. Uh, yeah, no, Lara's wearing this outfit for uh, for the next four levels. Um, and uh, the, again, it's like I like how actually. Is this and again? I think this is the first time Lara's been wearing the same outfit the entire game, and suddenly, you know, here's a different outfit. You know what? It makes the level stand out a little bit. Just because you're not looking at the same uh, kind of teal tank top Lara. Okay, we got boxes. Uh, trying to figure out, you gotta climb up one of these. Probably this one. This one seems like the. The least floaty box. Or that one, that one seems good too. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you think the Ocarina of Time Water Temple is a, a horrendous uh, representation of uh, water levels in games, uh, boy, have I got one for you. Can you get down here? No. Uh, interesting. Interesting. This is definitely uh, like a bit of a ledge here, but uh, maybe you just stand on this box. This is going to be the same thing as a. Uh, you don't stand on the box. It's a little too high. Okay. I think it's making sense in my head. Maybe. So, you definitely can't climb up here because there's a wall in the way, but you can climb up here just because you can fit through the gap. And you want to be able to fit down below here. So, if I can... Nope. <laughs> nope, I think that this is a dead end platform. Uh, nothing about grabbing the ceiling. You can't even climb back down. It's kind of weird. Uh, okay. Uh, so I came out of here. I guess I can swim down here, or did I come out of here and I'm actually looking the wrong way? I think I did come out of there. Yeah, I did come out of there. Okay. So in that case, uh, we'll swim the other way. What is in here? Here we go. So fortunately, Lara still has her guns. Uh, she just doesn't have uh, the ability to shoot them underwater. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing water sounds. That sounds like uh, I did something right. Okay, there is no water anymore. Uh. Oops. Tank controls, am I right? Uh. Lara's a tank. She's wearing the tank top. Well, not, not right now. She's wearing a good old rash vest. And no shoes. You... I'm pretty sure, like... You wouldn't, like, stand on anything sharp in, like, a sunken ship, but it'd be real slippery because this was underwater for decades. It'd be, like, coral. It's, I mean, the woods turned blue. Everything's turned blue. That's, that's a real alluring secret right there. Hi there. Hi there. I can clearly tell it's a it's a trap in the middle of the room. Uh -huh. Wait, also, why are the why is there a dude here? Now I'm trying to think like why, why is uh -huh. there a dude here? And there's gonna be a bunch of dudes here. I guess they found it first. Whoa! Uh. Oh, oh, hi. There you go. Uh -huh. Where is he hiding? The splish splashing, I tell you. Makes me nervous. Uh, so, Saints Row, yeah, yeah. So, the, I guess there's a, there's a bunch of things to basically like talk about when it comes to a game like that because uh like where do you start basically it's not even like i guess if the game came out like 10 years ago i don't think people would be like as uh -huh. complaining as hard but i think it is because games kind of were easier to make 10 years ago and then they fell out of fashion because they didn't make crazy amounts of money and now they've fallen back into fashion as like a a reboot revival kind of thing um but you know like it does the saints row name really mean anything who knows uh on top of that this is a fairly straight reboot other than it lacks the characters and also people kind of are ripping on the writing a bit and i'm like yeah fair enough if if uh, they're gonna make a comment about a guy not saying af properly or something like that hashtag blessed hashtag my life is in shambles i don't know something like that do people legitimately say that like i don't i don't use like social media where people read it out loud and say hashtag I actually I, I'm, I'm gonna express the boomer in me freaking anyone who like says hashtag instead of hash like just the, the symbol or if you say pound, sure, but like, hashtag is like, it's a tag with the hash, but the symbol is the hash. Can I make this jump or do I need to like go off the, the slippery slopes? I think I could just make this jump, yeah. And then, that's not a grippy ceiling. And that jump looks kind of far away now I think about it, but eh, worth a try. Wah. Oh, that's good enough. Um, I want to say these kill me. Uh, so, so yeah, so the Saints Row game, uh, yeah, it, feel, it feels like an older game, and also it's implemented like it's an older game. It kind of, the performance isn't amazing, the graphics certainly just vary by location really hard, apparently, um, and it's quite empty in some spots. Uh, the missions are very uninspired, they definitely feel like, uh, well, exactly, like you'd find, uh, older Saints Rose, which is a problem when you're trying to sell a reboot and people would rather buy the old ones. That's the problem, all these game developers have remastered and re-releases, uh, older games so much. I love this, by the way, how you get this nice little window into the outside. And what is that? What is that out there? Oh my gosh. Oh, thanks game, yet again, just remind me, yes, outside, wet, uh, and it's a little bit leaky in here, so I think the goal is you gotta 
turn off all the the fire bits out there, but let's see. Did I just like run in the circle and I've just like got myself No, this is a switch. This is a switch, yeah. Uh, let's hope it's this switch as well, this door. It's not that door. <laughs> Which door is it? Uh, but one, one thing, one topic I saw, and this is another one, it's like, this is a topic that I've, I've mentioned before, and it's just like, ugh, it kind of irks me. It's, uh, people saw that the difficulty in the game, you could tweak fair amounts of difficulty, like, parts of the game so like enemy combat strength enemy uh like driving speed or stuff like that there's a lot of different settings i invite the, the different difficulty settings as long as they don't make it overwhelming like it's like if i if i see a game and i just see like 10 different difficulty sliders for different things i get a bit overwhelmed i start like thinking okay maybe i'm just gonna go with the default uh, but that's just me um i don't hate the idea but i'm also thinking like well Sometimes games that do reach into so many little different, uh... That's probably... Oh! Gosh, there's switches everywhere. Okay, well that's one of the fire things. Did I just... Did I open this door? You can have these slides. Yeah. Or alternatively, you do the, um... Uh, like, uh... Like classic example is uh, uh, any game by Insomniac pretty much where uh, if you're dying lots they tone things down so if you're playing Spyro 3 there's a fun fa fact if you if you die a lot on a boss in Spyro 3 the boss takes fewer hits and sometimes attacks with fewer attacks they, they make the boss just subtly easier if you do die too many times and yeah same thing with graphic settings um, I do think it's nice to be able to tweak graphics settings, but there's also ones where it's just like, um, you're going to have people, like, you know, crank up sliders to the max. And there's quite a bunch that are just really impractical. Like, shadow resolution is one where it's like, it, it needs to be a product of your screen resolution. And the sliders never represent that, and, uh, I don't remember this door being here, but sure, I'll accept the door. I am now swimming, I am now outside, and there are little mini sharks, and there's a very big shark. Okay, we're going to get it, we're getting it. Oh, the, the, the moray, the moray's come to, come to bite my legs off. Jeez. Is there any reason to come out here other than the secret? No, I think this is actually just for the secret. Cool. Cool. Okay. Yeah, let's get out of here before the moray comes back. Um. But, yeah, yeah. So, why am I irritated about difficulty settings? Because... The, uh, the joys of a certain internet subculture called Twitter, uh, decided to promote the idea that difficulty settings are accessibility settings. To which I go... Easy mode is not an accessibility setting. Like, it's 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 a weird one, but it's like, yeah, games can be too difficult. But it's also like Saints Row. It's like I'm okay with an easy setting. Just don't call it an accessibility setting. And and I have the same thing about the the Last of Us remaster. Um, oh, I just realized there's a switch along the way. Uh, the Last of Us remaster. It's like a, a handful of the things they promoted in a tweet for like accessibility settings were not accessibility settings they were just let's make the game easier or like like legit a puzzle puzzles i don't understand how you can call like skipping puzzles accessibility stuff like like you know puzzles are tricky puzzles are blockers but a puzzle is usually not demanding of like physical finesse which is usually what the Accessibility setting is four. Uh, ex difficulty settings can be accessibility settings, or vice versa, but not always. Uh, of these chase scenario in games, the chase scenario. 
Oh, in, in like, uh, in what I'm doing here, or, or in just like different ones, like, like, uh, the Crash Bandicoot, like the camera's going, uh, the other way, so it's like it's facing away. Uh, I think I've got to hit this switch again. Usually the auto block, uh, in direction of mount and blade games definitely makes it easier, but it's also, oh yeah, yeah, the shark's in the pool. As long as you're moving, they can't reach you. Okay, cool, cool. That's all the switches. Well, that's all the fire gone. So now if I... I'm gonna do a save here. Uh, here we go, so... Uh, yeah, the sharks in the pool are a bit terrifying, I'll tell you that. So if I now run past that, I am now past that bit. Doors open. We're through. We're into a new, new part of the level. And there's more rays. Okay, swim up, swim up. There's a door there, and there's a lever here. They make you panic. Just swimming up through all these like floors. That's not on the top as well. That's somewhere at the bottom. I gotta go back down the path of the moray. Here, here you go. Do you like do you like chase sequences? There's literally Lara's got like a limited amount of oxygen and just could do a mad. Oh, who put this here? Who put this here? Sometimes the secrets actually do have items underneath it as well, like that. Okay, okay. Look at that! Didn't even drown. Easy money. Easy money. Because you can't fight the chasers back. Uh, you can shoot uh, harpoons at them if you want. Uh, which I did pick up a lot of harpoons just here. So I have 39 harpoon uh, shots. But 39 is not a crazy amount. I guess you could also shoot back at them once you're out of the water. Whoop. There's a wonderfully flooded... This is not flooded at all. A wonderfully destroyed room with a ladder. And I appreciate they even did the model on the ladder like shield there. This reminds me of that, uh, the Sphinx level in the first game. If anyone remembers that. There's a weird ledge up here. I don't think they really anticipate you to go up here. Uh, yeah, you could definitely, like, there are ideas of accessibility, but I kind of think, like, accessibility to be, like, you know, uh, a presentation, like, thing that people just won't get. So whether that's, you know, like, uh, color filtering, um, rebindable controls, it's just like, yeah, like sometimes, you know, people can't hit all the buttons, um, stuff like that. Uh, I also appreciate ones like additional audio cues because, um, because some people do rely on the audio more than, um, and purely visual aspect. And I personally, I do like audio cues when possible. That's something, um, I was watching a F1 race this morning, and they were talking about the audio blips on, like, gear shifts. Um, and, uh, it's just like, yeah, like, they have audio blips, and it's something that I've never played any racing game apart from the F1 games that do have audio shift up tones. Uh, maybe, maybe some other ones have it. But it's like, it's surprisingly a rare feature. I did not expect that to happen. I did not. I did not expect to just hit a switch and whoops, whoops, blew up the room. Whole thing exploded. Uh, I love how it all hilariously happens, like when you're not looking at it as well. So uh, I guess I can jump back up from here, and here we are, back in the the top room again. How's it going, top room? Let's see if I can do this jump. Nope. Okay. Let's go around the long way. Uh, but yeah, stuff like just, uh, you know, enemy AI doesn't attack as hard. It's just like, I don't know. To me, that's just always been difficulty. That's always been just the game is this difficult. Uh, I don't know if I would exactly 
tout it as accessibility when sometimes, a lot of the time, changing the difficulty too easy really does make the game uh, feel very odd. Like you lose the feeling. It's hard to, to imagine though. Like I'm not very I'm not very good at empathizing with it because not not saying it's like oh you know I'd, I'd love a game to be easier at times and I just dropped down and broke half my legs. That's okay. Um, and how do I phrase this in a way that doesn't make me sound like a complete jerk? Just like dismissing this because uh, it's like ultimately I invite more options when possible. I do appreciate. Uh, I think I'm gonna make it the stream again, but. Have a good one, Mr. Crip. Have a good one. Uh, the, uh... Yeah, or the other thing with the Saints Row game is that on a PlayStation 5, it's got, like, um... Effectively seven different graphics modes. Uh, a 1080p mode, a 1440p... Or two 1080p modes, two 1440p modes, a 4K mode. Um, and then, like, uh, the ability to, like, turn on and off ray tracing. And then there's other things that... I'm glad that games nowadays have as options, like motion blur, camera FOV, camera distance is another one. It's just like, there's a lot of that where it's like, that's actually really nice to have, especially in a console game. It feels feels like forever since, uh, what was that door? That's the box. Where's the the door I, I opened? Completely blanked on where that door was. I thought it was actually up above. Oh, there's two of these. There's two rooms. So which one did I climb up? Because, yeah, if I go up here, this is not the same room. This is a different room. So I've got to... Am I climbing up there? Is that is that where I'm going? Mount Everest of poop. Oh. Nope. I don't think it's happened. Oh, maybe it'll, maybe it'll happen over on this end. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Oh, we're making progress. Uh. Okay, I think I can do a long jump over there. Oops. That's okay. Wah. There we go. So what is this switch? Water. Well, there's definitely not water in this room. Is it water in this room? No. Uh, maybe I go back up in this room or... Yeah, curious how, how this level design is uh, kind of leading me along. It's definitely broken into sections. They seem to do that a bit more in this game. Whereas it felt like uh, there were some fairly gargantuan levels in the, the first game. Just all about, uh, you know, knowing every single little bit of the level. Uh, I haven't saved in a little bit, so let's uh, just make sure I do a save here. Um, I'm going to still note the... Uh, the one with the Midas statue is like, that's a real infamous one in my brain. Because it's just like, you've got to find three iron bars and then know that you've got to touch the iron bars on a statue. And I've already pulled the switch, haven't I? Yeah, okay. But it's underwater now. It's underwater now. So that's somewhere with water. So where's the water? Who's, who's, where's, where's the water pipes in from? Oh, it's sneeze number two of the stream. Oh my gosh, there it is. Can't believe it. I'm very sneezy boy. Ah, uh, is that maybe maybe it's this away? Oh, love this hallway. There we go. So I think, yeah, I think this room would have killed you if you dropped down. But hi there, Harpooner, how you doing? 
So the fact that there's water means I can now safely swim down into it. And is that... That's a shotgun. Cool. Oh boy. Oh boy. Alright, alright. Get, get him out of the sights, get him out of the sights. Get him, get him, get him, get him. There we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, he dropped some health. Good on him. Uh -huh. Definitely getting much more health than uh, uh -huh. I'm losing from these guys, so that's nice. I don't believe you lose uh, your items again for the rest uh -huh. of the game. <laughs> I don't think it happens. Oh, that's the end of the level. Cool! Okay, let's do one more level for the for the stream. Why is everything upside down? I, I hope I put Australia mode on. <laughs> I hope my inventory is on Australia mode. Oh no. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> How did that happen? It's not like the rest of the game is on Australia mode. Okay, well, I'm getting shot by people already. And I should go through the tube instead of trying to work my way back into the hole I just came from. Here we go. Oh, look at that! A health kit. I'm glad this game doesn't uh -huh. track kills, because it would totally suck having to like try and like hunt down and kill everyone. He keeps uh, chasing me. I don't know what's with the menu. I don't know what's with the menu. I'm I'm terribly sorry, but it's kind of funny. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. That was a real massive drop. So this is a uh, this is in like a sunken like a uh, living quarters, and it's all upside down. So this is like a swimming pool, but it's upside down. It's a diving board with railings. Why not? Let's use a, a, a med kit. No idea why the menu's upside down. No idea. I think uh -huh. if I reload, the level will probably fix it, but... It's kind of funny. Uh -huh. I'll probably load later at some point. So this level, I do remember absolute pain of trying to navigate it. Like, I, I remember not finding this up here for a while. Oh, I got the, there you go. There's just this little corridor up here. And it's really dark. Although I haven't needed my flares all stream, so... What is this guy doing in here? What is he doing? He's just chilling in the vents. I said it last stream, I'm not saying it this stream. Among Us came out in 2018. We gotta, like, let the joke die at some point, okay? Uh, and then what... What's down here when I drop down? This is a wonderful text. That's a secret. Uh -huh. Ancient Chinese are secret. That's the that's the terrible accent. Oh, and I'm getting shot already. Already need to use my upside down med kit. I hope he get. Did he drop more health? Nope. Why? Why would he? But I, th I guess you could probably see the secret from somewhere, but having to know that it's hooked up to this. Interesting. I thought the, I thought the drop was a bit sooner than that. Uh, so yeah, so I don't know about accessibility settings. Well, I've got an opinion about accessibility settings. I don't really like how uh, the user's a marketing ploy again. It's just like, oh yes, the game's got all these... Actually... Was it even a marketing ploy? Yeah, no, it is a marketing ploy. It's on Twitter. Everything on Twitter is marketing now. I don't remember the devs ever talking about it. I think it's just like people like... There's always someone out there where it's like, you know, a game is their favorite game on online. And it's just like... Like you can't really argue with it. Just one. There's not much point in really arguing with like, that kind of stuff, but also it's just like, what can you say like 
to someone when like it is actually their favorite game it's like oh okay sure you know what i mean it's like there's a degree of like you can't really do anything well sorry like people are gonna say it and that kind of gets uh using the medicare has no punishments so why not make it uh they're actually if i if i was using and i could actually map these controls if i really um <laughs> really had the the spot to do it but uh you can bind the small and large med kits to hotkey buttons if you wanted to uh so i wouldn't need to be pausing the game to open the menu to use the med kits that's only on the pc version though i think it's just because there's not enough buttons on the playstation controller and, not, and i'm not using the stick so it's a little inconvenient all right a couple of people Guy with the gun. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh. So many dudes. Just chilling in this, like, room. I guess Lara's probably not really much more nimble than anyone else. Um. Oh, if you're saying, like, why not make it... Uh, yeah, I, I always feel like maybe Lara should heal over time. It's kind of weird if it's, like... You just put yourself on low health, and then it's just like, you're kind of screwed if you don't have a medkit left over. You could technically win every encounter without getting hit, but it's, uh, it's rather difficult. So your medkits are just your buffer. Uh, I like this, like, texture of the, the upside down chandeliers. This is like a... Oh, I guess this game came out the same year as the Titanic movie. So, who knows if they were trying to capitalize off that. Everyone likes an upside-down ballroom anyways. Is this a ballroom? Yeah, I guess it is. Uh... I thought there was a way to jump up to the top from here. Hmm... We'll look back in a moment. There's some, there's some fun glass. Stalagmite glass. Uh, there's this down here, which is effectively walling my progress. I'm pretty sure the level doesn't really have any other rooms so far. And if it is, then done. But I'll, I'll eventually eat my words. Can't make that one. That just doesn't seem quite feasible right now. That's the highest ledge here. Uh, AMD premiere at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Ooh, AMD premiere. Make sure you tune in. I guess that's another thing uh, really cool as well is that uh, coming up to uh, September, we have uh, pretty much the big three companies all announcing new stuff of theirs. Um, You've got AMD announcing uh, Zen 4. You've got NVIDIA announcing uh, Ada Lovelace GPUs. Uh, I don't know if AMD's got new GPUs. Um, okay, don't do that jump. Don't do that jump. I don't know if AMD's got uh, new GPUs quite lined up. No, oh, it's still upside down. Who knows? Uh, and then Intel's got the... Uh, what's it? Raptor Lake uh, queued up. Ah, uh, yes. So, let's back up, drop, grab, there we go, there's a key? I think the key goes outside. Uh -huh. Then comes the fun part, trying to make this jump to get out of here. I think you just do a forward jump, you're good. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, pretty exciting times. Uh, I got mates, like, queuing up, trying to... Trying to go like, ah, you know, like, should I buy stuff now? And I'm like, the perfect time to buy parts is usually when the next generation is announced. Unless the next generation is actually, like, remarkably good. But you don't know that while it's, while it's in the announced state. And there's value in now as well, I always say. Like, if you think like, oh, you know what, like, I can wait another month, it's fine. Then sure. If you're like, no, nah, I really want a computer now. Don't feel like you've, you gotta wait and save, because it's just like, you know... Being able to have a computer now is 
There's always value in that. There's also value in being patient, but, you know, it, it depends on the individual. I think if I go back to this room, there's a... ...button or switch or something. Oh boy, there's more water. Everyone likes more water. Listen, we had one, one fairly water level. Never mind the other levels also had water in them. I'm just gonna keep doing them. Where does this lead? That's a, that's a wonderful sound, isn't it? I wonder what that is. Uh, yeah, what are my thoughts on... There's a lot of leaks happening for like the new uh, Zen 4. Like, I... <sighs> Listen, I, I'm incredibly jaded. I'm just like, you know, the leaks just feel like, uh, if I say guerrilla marketing, that, that's like what, uh, user benchmark guy says, and it's like, it's such a bit of a meme, and obviously, like, uh, there is no evidence that it really is guerrilla marketing, but I'm just like, I don't know, man. Like, just, uh -huh. just hear me out. If a leak happens... You can hype up the release without uh -huh. giving too many details. It can happen randomly. Uh -huh. And it doesn't necessarily have to be true. It it definitely, like, people raise in the question if it's way off the mark. And people stop trusting the people who are spreading the leaks. But it doesn't have to be, like, say Zen 4 is, uh, like, 15% better IPC than Zen uh, 3. And then also they're doing 5.5 gigahertz all core. And then when it comes out, it's really 12% and like 5.4. I don't think people are gonna be too upset by that by the older statistic, because it's just like I mean it's not it's not as big a jump, but it's also just like, yeah, I mean it's not too far off the money. It's not too far off. Uh I have a weird feeling I remember. Oh yeah, you put the keys in the in the spots here. You see there's three keyholes. No. And that's not this is this is the restroom key. So I believe, yeah, you put the three keys in the holes and it puts the three fires out. And that'll allow you to pull the box. So okay, that's our this is our end goal. This is where the level ends. Or at least where we've gotta continue on. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, but 5.7, I think, I think that's a 5.7, like, single core boost, and I think it was, like, 5.5 all core, but the, sometimes I see a leak actually do say 5.7 all core, and I'm like, that's a very big jump. That's a really big jump. Also, is that 5. That's off the 7950X as well, isn't it? Which, I guess, their last generation, the 5950X, like, they did manage to have the best all-core, or the best boost clocks on... Not all-core, but the best single-core boost clocks were on the, the 5950X. Uh... Where is the restroom key? Hopefully it's not behind the other boxes that I just kind of moved out of the way. Really hope it's not. Oh boy. Uh, cause yeah, there's not much room to really shove these boxes, is there? Like this one, legit. I've got nowhere to go unless I push it further in that way, which I I guess I have to do. So. Eh. Uh. <laughs> I, I am hopeful for all of them. I, d I don't want to, like, make I myself seem like a fanboy. Um, I do think Intel has gotten slightly unreasonably bad PR. And then the bad PR seems to miss the actual bad PR things. Like, the fact that uh, Alder Lake does have some compatibility issues here and there. Um, like, obviously, that was the one of, like, oh, you've got to disable e-cores to get some games working because of info. Uh, which I think has been fixed out. AMD seems to improve the thermal capacity of the new CCD. Small 5 nanometer die can consume more power than 5... Uh, yes, that is that is true as well. Um, it's also rocking the 10 nanometer, but... Uh, 
it, it it is still like a it's a feature and not sorry not a feature but like it's a it's an architectural point and not exactly a performance one so like well we will see when we see it but it's certainly a step in the right direction it's kind of interesting you can't like shit that is this a bathroom is this a restroom this is a restroom did you notice that this is a restroom this doesn't look exactly like a restroom. Okay, it opens a door, only for me to then go, ah, button. Okay, and then <laughs> just let a guy out. I guess that blue room isn't underwater, but this the one on the left is. So, okay. Well, he tripped over and uh, he probably dropped an item. No, he didn't drop an item. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, game. Uh... Yeah, I, I am curious how, how it'll go, how Intel's 10 nanometer is really going to rock, because, like, I mean, older, like, just, I, I don't want to say, like, it just came out, as in, like, it's brand new, but, like, as in, Intel's been trying their 10 nanometer for a while in mobile, only just figured out how to really push it for the desktop, and it's doing pretty alright, like, for desktop stuff. The fact that, like, both the AMD and the Intel uh, chips of... The end of last year, or as of the end of last year, kept uh, they kept up with each other. Like that's that's really good. That's that's nice that they, um, you know, they're pretty on par. Uh, I'm curious how this will go. I'm always so annoyed about my 5900 uh, temp, so I lock my CPU fan speed to 50%. I don't know what I've got my fans on. I think they're on a pretty like uh, silent go. Um, I've got a 9700K, which is uh, showing its age. <laughs> A lot of my mates keep showing me like, you know, like, oh, I'm doing this benchmark or whatever, and they got more more threads than me. I know the eight cores on the the 9700K are like, they're great. They're they're just solid cores all around. And then uh, yeah, my cooler's is pretty quiet on it, and it soaks up way too much of the the heat. So it's pretty good. It's pretty manageable. And then I I, I put a, a 4.9 gigahertz all core on that um i think it's like 4.9 on the max one but 4.6 all core uh yeah i opened that door but now i'm scratching my head going okay so i've that's definitely the way to go opening that door and continuing on so how do i continue i'm worried that it's like a ledge that i climb up Like, this feels just out of the way, so okay. Uh... Some of these places make me feel like there might be a box available. Uh, this actually might be... This might actually be the ledge that I was thinking of. So, I don't know, it goes to the edge. There you go. Okay. I'm glad I didn't get, like, too lost in here. I'm gonna jinx myself. I'm glad I haven't gotten too crazy lost this stream. <laughs> Jinxing myself so hard, but... Listen, it's going alright so far, so... So, now I know I'm on the wrong side of the room. Oh, I guess I just... <sighs> Classic. They do this kind of level design in Tomb Raider 3 as well like more so it's kind of annoying where it's like obviously that wall is like colliding on one corner but because technically this like climbable you know sill is still available the entire way you know it doesn't lock you off so therefore you can keep going uh i do need to go over there because i saw the i saw the thing over there ah uh, yeah, CPU's gonna be interesting. I definitely... The other thing with the CPUs is that we're also in a, like... You know, we are providing more overkill solutions for the regular Joe, but also it's really great for people who do need that CPU grind. Like, for me, I'd probably love a bit more CPU performance to, um... Uh... To, uh, do video rendering. Um... I've never found the 9700K to be, like, too limiting for casual work. It's really good. It's really solid. Um... <sighs> Uh, I definitely, like, I had originally felt, uh, the limitations of my 4790K when I was doing, um, I was trying to do recording and playing Hitman 2016, and that was what really killed, 
my last chip, so I was like, I'm getting a new one. And that's what that was, and uh, yeah, it seems to be doing the job. And obviously, like, you know, I stream now and play games, and it's, it's, it's doing all right. Uh, I'm gonna do some video rendering, put that on low priority, because it's video rendering. I'm not, like, crazy pressed for time to do that. And then, uh, yeah. So, I've got no crazy need to upgrade. I guess that's the other one as well. Like, maybe I can sound a bit more cynical if I... If I'm not, like, thinking of the, the stuff. CPU improvements is support for laptops and server. Uh, definitely for, for laptops, because we need to be able to deliver more grunt and less power. And they're doing a lot better now. Like, the amount of stuff you can do in a 15 watt CPU is real crazy. No. Uh, circuit breaker, I believe, goes back in the other room, but... Uh... Isn't it weird that this ship has the same kinds of doors as the last ship? It's a different ship now. Uh, this is a room. This is a room. This is certainly a room. There's nothing in this room. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, server, uh... Yeah, I, I'd actually say so, because a lot of servers nowadays are doing, um, VM work. And the more kind of things that you can get running on one server, like one physical machine, the better it is. So yeah, I, I can I can see that. I can agree with that. Um, oh gosh, which which box you push? There we go, slide this out. And they're not hiding anything behind there, are they? Uh, now we can put the 6800 uh, u into a handheld machine. Yes, yes. What does the, um, the Steam Deck is using a Zen 2 based CPU, isn't it? But then the GPU has RDNA 2 cores in it, or is it RDNA 1 cores? Or the, or the iGP, sorry, not, not exactly the GPU, but, um, that's something that AMD has particularly done well in, and I'm really sad they didn't do any Athlons for Zen 3, because the 3000G and the 3200G were, like, crazy, like, neat little chips for the price that they were at and like the things that they actually did on those chips obviously a dedicated graphics card a lot better does a lot better but uh it's really nifty just like uh, okay so now the door opens up there which is fine because this is just pull this and i'm good i'm free oh it, it got brighter all of a sudden There we go. Up and out. And it go back down. This is an ominous hallway. Thank you, upside down. Upside down passport. Uh Okay, this is a room. Uh, several Chinese manufacturers make several 6800H handhelds. I guess that's, yeah, that is kind of neat that, uh... Oh yeah, because there's a lot of, like, emulator machine, um... Just, like, devices you can get. Um, yeah, those are, those are really cool. I, I, I do like those. And, uh, yeah, the 6800H is a real, like, crazy powerful CPU for the amount of power it draws and also the fact that you can put it into a handheld and it cools quite thermally. Uh, I always get a little worried about like the really, really top end CPUs, so stuff like the 1600U. Oh, that, that's okay. But you use in the similar boat, just lower power. Uh -huh. But still, eight cores, like on a on a mobile CPU, and they're, and they're not even like, sometimes it's like, oh, some of the cores get skimped out on. They're like not as powerful, but it's like, no, I mean, Horizons are pretty good on that one. I think Intel's got a decent idea with the E cores as well, like, in theory. I like the idea of, here's a CPU with, like, two powerful cores, but then eight, like, efficiency cores that can just do, like, whatever on the on the side there. Like, that seems really neat for the, the cheaper devices. Because um, it's like, hey, you get the multi-thread performance without any, like, weird cheesing. Like, hyper-threading is neat, but it, it does still kind of do some switching back and forth. Um, whereas, like, you know, if you can actually have physical cores, that's pretty cool. Uh, 
on the desktop end, uh, I think definitely people feel like, yeah, the, the 5900X and the 5950X with the 12 and 16 real cores. There's no, Intel doesn't quite have a replacement, but I do think Intel's definitely got a big, um, a big stake in the lower end market. The 12600K uh, definitely exists in its own kind of market. Like I think there's kind of people who would probably go for a 12600K uh, and not, um, ah, okay, I see what they want me to do here as well. Uh, maybe not the 5600X at times, but the 5600X is also a little cheaper. But then there's also the 12 mine. But then also the motherboards are more expensive. There's, there's a lot of things to weigh up. Oh, the other thing that is going to be kind of... Uh, they choose the 6800U mainly because it has the complete 12CU GPU. Ooh, that's nice. 12CU is... Doesn't the... The 50... The 6500XC have 16 CUs, like it's, it's not, that's a dedicated graphics card for 300 Australian and it barely, like, outperforms just the mobile chip. There we go, now we can push the next box and into the next room. Why there needs to be another box, I don't know. In fact, this, this level keeps kind of winding around in weird ways. It makes more sense, like, while I'm playing it, because it's like, oh, like, I'm in this kind of corridor and there's, you know, I'm, I'm discovering the new areas, but, like, I, I've just, like, taken a step back and kind of gone, like, yeah, I don't think... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. Alright, we jump on the last one. There we go. How are you supposed to react to that? Like, it just happens. It just happens. Uh well, hi there, Mr. Man. Hello. I don't think I'm gonna do any favors by standing down here. Fight time! And I'm dead. Wouldn't there be like a second lot of barrels that comes after this one? There you go. You are dead. Surprise, big knot. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay, so we've got like three things to tackle. There was the bit with the boulders, there's the pit where that guy is, and then there's this ledge I've climbed into, which looks like there's a floor that reveals at some point. Okay, cool. Try to soak in the room. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the other cool thing is, yeah, NVIDIA's got the GPUs coming, and, uh, unfortunately for AMD, like, the, the RDNA 2 GPUs just never crazy took off. Definitely in the DIY space, people talk about them. Uh, also, I uh, can't operate this while it's wet. Um, people definitely talk about them, but, uh, they don't have the market share, according to, to Steam, and that's definitely something that... I don't really know how they're going to fix because they seem to have a really well fleshed out stack except for the 6500 XT but that's okay because it's not like Nvidia's really got a cheap GPU either so um well cool Cool. Did I save? Did I save at any point there? Oh, I did. I didn't pay attention to where the lever opened. I saw a door next to a guy who was collapsed. Or was it just literally here? Oh, it was just literally here. Okay. I'm gonna go for that secret. That secret's sitting there. Uh... But yeah, I, I do hope AMD does recover some market share. I think they're doing some really neat things, and even if, like, sometimes it's a little bit of NVIDIA catch-up, or, like, we're doing the NVIDIA feature but differently, like, that, you should do the NVIDIA feature but differently at AMD, because NVIDIA's features are oddly kind of walled off. They seem to have a lot of features that are just, like... I understand that RTX and a lot of, a lot of the ray tracing features lean on the specific hardware that's on the device 
So it's not something that can really trivially be implemented in software. It can, because they added it back to the tensor. Oh my gosh, that still killed Lara. Wow, you gotta really bolt it. Okay. Ooh. Uh, AMD has limited 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer capacity, so they put the most profitable products at the top. I wouldn't mind a good Epic, actually. Like, just considering an upgrade of some kind. It's like, the, there's one Epic chip, I think the 7543P. I think that's, or maybe it's just the 7543. It's the 24 core. Is it the 24 core? I think it is the 24 core. That's like... No, I think it is the 32. Uh, it's not the, the ones with uh, 3D V-Cache, although, yeah, it's kind of interesting that they've got the 3D V-Cache on a lot of Epic chips. But we only talk about the 5800X3D, because uh, that's the only one that we really have lots of evidence for, I guess. Um, it'll be curious, I am really looking forward to seeing the 3D V-Cache. It's just, it's not going to be here for the chips that come out this year, so... <sighs> Like, a AMD's got to really hold people over if they're going to wait until next year to to uh, unleash the uh, the Intel killer, so to speak. Uh, is this the room I remember where it's like, I'm about to fall into the center? I, it is. It is. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you just gotta like save yourself, like trying to fall there. I don't know why it closes, but it just does. Uh, there we go, so that room's open. So now we continue on. We'll jump out. I'm here on a guy walking. I played some Splatoon 3 demo yesterday. Almost everyone has experienced, like. Yeah, that was my biggest issue with trying to get into Splatoon 2, was, uh. There were too many people who knew how to play Splatoon 1 and were just like, really wrecking me. And uh, I'm not <laughs> the most amazing. Uh, although sometimes I feel like I'm doing alright because I still spray a lot of paint everywhere and then it's like, oh, I'm kind of near the top because I'm spraying paint, but definitely not getting the kills that often. Uh, I didn't play it a crazy amount and now I haven't paid for my Nintendo Switch Online, so... Uh, I guess I, I have no hope of... Uh, playing Splatoon 3 right now, but, uh, looks alright. Looks alright. I heard that the servers are, I, either the servers are a lot better or a lot worse. I heard something about the servers. Um, is that guy, like, trying to, like, pop shot me from the other side of the room? There's two of them, that's why they're trying to pop shot me. Oh, he's hiding, he's hiding. Absolute coward, or he died behind the wall. He died behind the wall. There you go. Let's get him. Okay. So, we've got a button. What does the button do? Push the button. Oh. Guess there's a pit. Is that pit on my side, or is it on the other side? It's on the other side. Oh, wait. Is that even the other side? I don't even think that's the other side. That's just... I think I gotta jump for that from, from the other side. I don't think you can climb over there or just casually drop down there. And did it just pull itself back up? It pulled itself back up. But yeah, I feel like you gotta jump from here onto that ledge and then go down. Okay. Gonna make it quick. Gonna make it count. Uh, also, I'm a little bit worried right now because it's like, okay, so that's the second of those switch keys. I have one of them, but there's, there's another one somewhere. Okay, bolt it, bolt it, bolt it, bolt it, cut the corners, cut the corners, cut the corners. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Flawless. That wasn't really flawless. I <sighs> just flipped out a little bit. Okay, so a new floor opened up. Ah, because this is a death floor. 
There's, there's spiky glass all over the place. And what does this button do? Okay, it drains the water back in this room. So there's more to do back there. Got it. Uh, is there any way to get back up? Or... Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Now I can get the, the stuff that these two dropped. Or at least one of them dropped. Uh -huh. Uh, then on NVIDIA's end, uh, people are talking about the 80% improvements again, and I'm just like, 80%? Like, like I, I still, I still keep memeing of NVIDIA, please hire me. Uh, I don't know, I really, I really like the stuff, like the products that they do, uh, that don't get competed by AMD. Stuff in the, the neural network space, I just feel like there's not really a crazy competition from AMD on that. They seem to be focusing high on more uh, traditional compute. Um, how do I get back up? I guess I could slide down on there, but that's not really productive. Is that the shark pit or is it like a thing down below? I don't think I should be dropping down there. So either that or the that drop that ledge is also closed off. Uh, I was like, I was like, wait a minute, that ledge uh, activated when I walked over it. Cool. 80% is still not possible to run some games in 4K or 44 Hertz Ultra. Um, I I agree with that. And now, as a guy with a 4K 144 Hertz monitor, I 100% accept that. Uh, like, there's a lot of games I was playing where it's like it struggles. It definitely struggles to hit 144. Uh, a lot of games, yeah, start getting to. They'll definitely get above, but you got to start tweaking settings. That being said, I still kind of tout games have silly settings. I don't think anti-aliasing is exactly a silly setting, but it's one that makes less sense when you're at 4K. Like, or rather, it makes less sense uh, when you have a high pixel density. That that should be the, the important thing to know. Um, can I drop down or am I going to break my legs? It feels like a bit of a drop, but... I've got to be able to go down there. That's a bit of a drop. That is a bit of a drop. Lots of small mini packs, not many big ones. Um, so anti-aliasing can be turned down. I also think that some games have good shadow quality, like just a bit too silly. Uh, so I would definitely say it depends on the game, but you could certainly make it work. I think there's room, of course, for the cards to get more, uh, uh, get better. And obviously at 4K, like, there is still room. The monitors are better than the, than the games at the highest settings or with, uh, observable settings. Because that's also another one. You can sometimes see it. Um. Okay. Oh, there's the last switch. Okay. There's the last key. Cool. So now, okay, so I hit that button. I'm so, oh, it's so dark. What is this? Oh wait, this is this room from earlier. And where was the key? The key is back here. Okay, so I've just got to come from there or figure out how to open this door. Okay. Uh, some more double layers are added to uh, FH5 and they are confusing. Uh, I don't know which one I should choose. Uh, I'm just going to assume FH5 is Forza Horizon 5. But then I'm trying to think double A's. Aston A. Martin. It's been a while since I played Forza Horizon 5. I played it at the end of last year and then just on the on the game pass I never played uh, much more of it. And this isn't a useful ledge because I've already been up here. It's, uh, it's, ah, that makes more sense. But still Forza Horizon 5. So I got I got one of it right. <laughs> uh yeah, there's definitely a lot of weird ones. I'm personally under the opinion that SMAA kind of does what it what I want it to. I've never found any like huge need to 
go much more than SMAA. Uh, it's a bit costly. It is certainly costly. I don't... I can't get back up from... Yeah, like, I guess I can crawl over to the other side of the room, but... I'm now thinking, like, do those boxes lock me into this room? Because I haven't gotten that third key yet. And where did this lead to? This was just... Oh, this led to, to here, and then this... Yeah, and there's a mystery door at the end of this. Uh, I could do the drop again. I still don't know what's with some of these rooms. Like, some of, the, some of these rooms just legit have, like, nothing in them. This one actually did have something in it, because I, I ran to the other end of it. Um, I know as well there's DLAA. That's NVIDIA's Deep Learning Anti-Aliasing. And that's actually a real interesting one. I don't think it really makes sense for 4K, but it's like... It uses neural nets to determine sub-pixel details and just the sub-pixel details. And then, like, effectively presents that. It's like, oh, this, you know, this is what smoothed out edges. And it's kind of neat in, in concept. I really do need to see some of them in person in order to, like, really judge for myself. It's like FXA is, like, it's great on paper. The moment you start using FXA, you're like, oh, DLSS is pretty good in 4K. Uh, is that like moving up to 4K? Like, as in like 1080p source or 1440p source that's upscaled to to that? Whoop. What tarnation? Uh -huh. Yeah, I would really like... I actually, I would really like to get um, either like a 3080 Ti or... Just indulge, go for a 3090 Ti, uh, upscale 40. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I would actually, I'd really like to try it out as well, because, like, currently, right now, yeah, trying to run games at 40 uh, or at 4K native, it's just like. It's, uh, it's, it's taxing on the computer. The computer does not like. Well, it does like it, but it's, it's. It's definitely, there's room for it to, to run smoother. And the biggest, the biggest hitch I, I, I have is, yeah, with these monitors, is like, I need HDMI 2.1. The 1080 Ti does not have HDMI 2.1. I therefore can't output 4K, 4, uh, 144 hertz, um, oddly at RGB. I can't even do that. I have to use YUV 422. I don't know why. Um... This looks like a door that opens, but like, yeah, I've hit this button before. And that handles that door back there, so let's not get rid of that. So what did that button next to me do? The other one. I can work my way back into the, the tubes from up here. Obviously, it seems like I've just got to be able to grab the, um, the key and get out of here. Get the heck out of Dodge. But this drops me off. I guess it goes in two directions, doesn't it? Uh, some ghost solutions when object it it does, yes. It's still well, I I guess that in in the rendering it does. Uh, I was also gonna say like uh, these displays still do a little bit as well. Okay, so that's just that's just where I came in from. Cool. I'm glad I reestablished that to myself. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say that happens with the monitors as well, where it's like it overdrives. So it, it, like, oh, you know, these pixels changed, and then it kind of kicks it in really hard and kind of goes a bit too far when trying to unchange those pixels. So you can really tell, like, when an object, like, leaves. What does this button do? I prefer to keep it pressed. FSR 2.0 is similar. Um, it's because it's, it's relying on temporal elements. So, like, if an object exists and then suddenly disappears, uh, it tries to fill in the gaps, and sometimes it can't tell the difference between, like, an object panning to the side and an object completely disappearing. Okay, and then that just drops back into the, the center room. Not the center room, but, like, the ballroom. And this is back in this room. There you go, got down. And this 
door. Wait, you can't get in that. This has to open somehow. Is this button... Does that button open the door? <laughs> I'm gonna do a double check on that button. Because I'm thinking, like, if that button, if you press it, it'll uh, open the door, but then you've got to be quick to rush back around. I don't know if I was particularly paying attention. I didn't hear anything when I pressed the button, though. No, it, that, doesn't, that didn't move that door. Okay, check back again. It didn't move that door. It kind of looks like I've got a little bit of a door here as well, because it sticks out a little bit, but... I don't think this TLSS requires an RTX GPU. That's a typical NVIDIA thing. I think the implementation is like I I don't I don't see why it could easily run on other things because I understand exactly like the parts of the architecture that they sound like they're hitting. Who knows? Maybe you could do DLSS entirely in software, and that's exactly what uh, FSR is. It's entirely a uh, you know, just running off floating point compute units. Um, because you can do that. You don't necessarily need tensor units in order to do neural nets. There's a reason why you can run, you know, TensorFlow off really any GPU. Because you can. So, uh, perfectly makes sense why you can do it generically. And, and in AMD's case, if it works generically and the algorithm it should run it in a normal GPU. Uh, it, it it should be. There should be. I can understand why it doesn't because of the the way they've they sound like they've implemented it, leveraging tensor units. Whether they've needed to actually leverage tensor units, who knows? Because FSR is doing it. That's that's my stance on it. In this case. I, I definitely think NVIDIA has limited stuff before when it really never needed to. Um, like, uh, I still think a video encoding is a bit of a weird one. It's like, eh, there's probably bits on the card that could do video encoding, but apparently the implementation is uh, weird. Video broadcast and video, so you can only run an RTX GPU. Uh, oh yeah, and chuck RTX voice in the list. That one is kind of horrendous, where it's like, oh, it can only run an RTX card, and then like, oh, if you change this one bit of like the XML that installs it, and then it will try and install it, it works on 10 series cards, perfectly fine. And I ran it, and I'm like, yeah, no, it runs fine on my card. And it's really impressive as well. Uh, I'm, I'm pulling up the Tomb Raiders, because I'm getting a bit lost. I'm sorry, my fellas, we did it again. Uh, so, level menu. I'm pulling up the walkthrough, I can't believe it, I can't find... Okay, so... Uh... What is this? Retrieving the... Hold on, yeah, wait. Hello, return to the beginning, not return to the beginning. Large room with the balconies and the pit of broken glass. Like the second circuit breaker, follow the balcony around to the raised opening when you enter this room, climb up and continue to the previous room is now longer in the flutter, safely drop down to the opening to the grinding floor, open the hatch wheel and follow the sloping pathway to climb to the rusty patch at the bottom floor to the end, drop into the small blue room behind the glass breakers in the restroom, take the third screen? What? Take the third one, just right there. Uh, oh, uh, uh? That for some reason, both of these... I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay, I was like, why is it that, like, both of those doors are open? And then it didn't, it didn't even click in my head. That, like, the whole point of why you can drop back down into this room... Ugh, I hate this. Every time I look it up, it's like, oh, it's the most obvious thing. The whole reason why you can drop out down into this room is to close the doors. And then you go back up. 
This is classic Tomb Raider. This is just like, ah, yes, that thing you, you opened before, you gotta make sure it's closed or else you're not gonna be able to get past it. Ah, oh, kicking myself. Kind of surprising as well. There was a bit more level afterwards. So there you go. Uh -huh. Third key. Okay, so now I've got the three keys. I can continue on into that burner room. And then we'll see where this level takes us. So back down into this room. Walk my way out. Oops. Tables everywhere. I can't believe this is a bathroom. There's tables. This, well, who puts tables in a bathroom? Uh, yeah, no. Exciting times for everyone with computer hardware. Uh, only thing that's... I think Seagate did say they're probably trying to sh ship out 30 terabyte hard drives, which is that, which sounds neat, but I don't know, SSDs are kind of like ubiquitous now. Like you only need a hard drive if you want really cheap storage that's like above 8 terabytes, and a lot of people don't really have a need for 8 terabytes. Definitely more than one though, it's a crazy low amount on the, the PS5. Oh, I didn't even mention, they raised the price on the PS5. Uh, not in the US, but in uh, here in Australia, Canada, some other parts of the world, like I think Europe. They raised the price, which is crazy because I've never seen a PS5 for sale. They've constantly been sold out from like every store that I know. Um, it's absolutely nutty. I've seen Xbox Series S's easily available. Series X's uh, only just became available again, but PS5's? Nowhere. It's, it's impossible to find a PS5. It's crazy. Uh, so I could queue myself up for there, or I could manage to do this jump and see what's over here. Okay, we're, we're, we're pushing the box further. Um, yeah, no, it's absolutely insane how, cr how crazy selling the PS5 is, and it's weird, because uh, considering upgrade my hardware for found an internship, I hope you do get that internship because the upgrade I think will be pretty neat. Although you do have a 5900X, so I don't know. <laughs> you don't need a CPU upgrade, you just need a GPU one. That 5900X is going to hold up. I don't think your CPU is going to be pushed too hard. Unless you do push it hard. What is this guy doing? He's waiting in there the entire time. Like I got a I got a mate who bought a 1950X back then, and that was on the on the Threadripper socket, and he was just like, "It's kind of crazy how quickly that chip got." That has a loud sound. It's crazy how quickly that chip kind of got classed out by uh, even like the, the 3950X. So now we can do some fun jumps. There we go. Run and jump. Wah. One last jump, well I guess two last jumps for the masses. Just for funsies. Funsies is good. Remember if you do the CPU you gotta do the RAM as well because it's gonna be DDR5 only. Uh, I'm still kind of surprised they're doing DDR5 only and still not doing a transitional generation. It's a drop. There we go. Uh, oh, I guess I guess we're up underneath here. Okay. Hey, does this remind you of a certain demo on a PlayStation demo disc? This room. I don't think Lara was wearing a swimming outfit though. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's the more way. X670 seems like a mess, so maybe I'll be 650. Yeah, I don't know if, uh, if X670 seems like the right thing. I saw there was one X670 board that has an uh, X670E board. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was like, it, I think it lacked. I think it had like one, like, by 16 slot on it. One PCIe by 16 slot. I was like, really? One? Very bizarre. Here we go, a legitimately dark-ish corridor, and it's kind of flooded, which makes it all the more better. Should probably shoot the moray. Uh, 
I, I am a little bit in the wall, and now the moray is chomping at my toes. Get out of here, moray. Die. Take that, moray. Uh, okay, so door closed. Uh, let's see, weird valves. Ether expensive, the only difference is all the PCIe from the CPU must be 5.0. Honestly, like, uh, like, I've been chatting to mates about this, and they're kind of like, yeah, not a person really uses PCIe 4, unless you have a 6500XT. Uh, unless you have that specific GPU that's oddly limited by the fact it doesn't have 16 lanes or 8 lanes. Uh, that's the only card that actually, like, feels different between PCIe 3 and 4. And if you if you do storage and you do really use the speeds, then sure. But again, in most game applications, not really the case. Never really comes up. Uh, okay, so there's flares in here. Uh, this... uh -huh. There are indeed flares in here. I can pull this box, or push this box, or push it. <laughs> Lever. Why does it hide in the lever? Okay. I think the worst part about X670E is that, like, AMD has kind of been infamous in, like, how cheap B450 and B550 ended up being. And now it's like the kind of. I don't know really many people who bought into X470. Cause like, uh, B450 was all they needed. There wasn't really anything in the, the export that they really wanted, whereas at least I'm on Intel. I gotta buy a Z or else I'm not gonna be able to do a uh, core ratios, although I can do BCLK. So X670 has two FCH chips, it still loses to the Z690 in terms of PCIe lanes. Uh -huh. Oh, that's a bit of a disappointment as well. But then like on the converse, it's like B650 is gonna have most of the features that people still one right although i i will say i'm under the the uh assumption that not the assumption but like uh the opinion that uh h610 is surprisingly like good enough i bought two x570 motherboards because at the time oh yeah that, uh b550 was not really yeah, yeah, yeah. although they released the chips like fairly after b550 came out like there was they were like oddly delayed i don't know what was up with that oh, outside shot open a door somewhere with water i don't know where exactly it was i'll just keep looking around i'll probably be around in somewhere there's a large hallway there's a bit of water that seems like a good sign probably out here and there's a shark hi there shark i had a shark too you are mores, this doesn't count. I think this actually might be the end of the level. Okay, really big open area. I'm gonna hope that I can find the oxygen. Maybe I should save. <laughs> save before I've burnt more than half my uh my oxygen so I can turn back if, I, if I'm an idiot. Okay, not in there. Hi there, sharks. How you don't that's still mores. Hi there, mores. Uh I'm pretty sure it was like this little like tiny nook here at the spot. Somewhere in here. This looks really familiar to the other, like, outside area. I think it was on the last level. Uh, was it up here? Nope. It really wasn't up here. Nope, that's, that's certainly a, a wall. That's certainly a wall. That's certainly a wall. Okay, Lara is now about to die. And cool, Lara died. Hmm. What am I doing outside here? There's, there's gotta be a way. And I'm in this corner. I'm in this exact same corner, but I got oxygen this time. Uh... Oh, there's a key. There's a key. Okay, let's get back real quick. Hi there, shark. How you doing? <laughs> Who puts the key out here? Who dropped it? Now uh, the shark. Hello, shark. How you doing? There we go. 
Okay, big breathe back in. Uh, so now where does the key go? Key is good. There are two uh -huh. bullets. Are they magnum bullets? One of the two. Is that a switch? I think I gotta have. Oh, actually, yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, there's a ledge that's gonna come out. Why can I not pull that? Because it's a drop. There's a drop back there. I don't suppose I could push it from the other side. Nope. You tell me I can't pull that. Interesting. Okay. I'll leave that on hold for the moment. That that uh box. Uh okay, the key. The key is my interest. Something needs the key. Uh, this is where I started. Didn't really look like there was anything here. Especially to put the key in. What's this room? I don't suppose this box keeps going further. Uh, and if you pull it back too far, you can't really leave, so... It's not really going to reveal anything. Hi there, Shark. How you doing? Uh, that was this room. This was the first room. Pull the thing. Uh, pull that switch. AMD always reuses resources like the 12 nanometer IOD and the Ryzen 3500 uh, 5000 X570. This time the dual FCH and X670. Hope they do less this time with more healthy income. Ah, yeah, yeah. Is it, is it, is it like just like a weird added cost to the end consumer? It's like, I don't really want this. That was something I feel like people felt with, um, Z, uh, 690. Is that, like, it's got, like, way too much, like, doodads on the board that I don't know if people necessarily need. Same thing with, a uh, B660. Kind of just struggles, because the boards are too expensive. There's too much stuff on them. Okay, I'm looking back at the Tomb Raider's guide, man. I, I, I don't know, I've completely lost it. So you jump in the water, stand at the edge of the trap door, turn around to lie in the water, kill two sharks, yeah. Swim forward, cabin key, grab it, roll forward the way you came. In addition to the key, I'm not going to count the secret. Uh, to hop backward, so. Okay, so return to the bridge. Cabin is the room with the four small windows near the rectangular pit in the floor. The door and lock are in the hallway on the left side. What am I looking at here? What am I actually looking at here? Until now, they do the same thing in different ways and waste resources. That is true. Them pushing 14 nanometers so much, like, I don't know, man. I guess it made money. Maybe that's what they wanted. They did burn so much silicon though by doing it. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I've got like a picture. And it makes it look like a... Oh, I got my bedtime mode on. Turn that off. Yeah, it's in a really blue room. Having door to the bridge. Use the... Kind of says the door and the locker. That's really weird. I'm trying to like figure this out in my head. I can't even like imagine where the lock is. Was the lock around this way? Ah, oh, that's it. This tiny little thing. Can't even see it. Can't even see it. Couldn't even tell that that was a door as well. Okay, so now I'm in here. Now there's a switch. Pull the switch. Things like Logitech were releasing new G502X. Ooh. They need a... Well, actually, I was going to say they did do a new racing wheel, didn't they? Okay, so now that... Yeah, so that pushed that down, which means I can now move over here. Push the box by one. 
I would, I would probably like, a, um, uh, I remember the, was it the G402? That was like the just classic but tried but true mouse. And I've like burnt so many Corsair M65s in the process. It's just like, I've, I've just, you know, one of the clickers breaks on me within like a year and a half. It's just a shame. Um. Oh, I'm hearing more rumbling. And this level keeps going as well. I'm amazed how long this level is. That's the best sound. This is a different room, I believe, to the to the one earlier that looked almost the same. These guys do do not have a plan. They don't have a plan. They just kind of cop it. Weird. Alright, so now I'm up the top here. Uh, I could jump down into the center, but I think the, the main intention is to... There's a harpoon guy in there. There's a gosh darn harpoon guy. Do I just jump in? Do I just go for it? I'm just gonna jump in. Come on in, the water is great! Hi there, harpoon guys. See you, harpoon guys. Oh gosh, where do you go? Where do you go from here? Uh, is this a hole? Is this a place to surface? No. Is any of this a place to surface? Behind these rocks? Ah. Done wall mores. There's just wall mores everywhere. What is this? wall mores? Oh my gosh! I think this actually is the end of the level. But I'm also about to run out of oxygen. The yeah, heck yeah! <laughs> okay, so I've got my oxygen and my health back. I'm looking at Lara's butt, and uh, I will call that a stream. So there we go. We've done another four levels. Uh. <laughs> And uh, Lara is still in the middle of the water. What will happen afterwards? There's two more levels of water levels, so don't worry. Uh, also, seems a new one uh, has a uh, light micro switch. Fine, won't suffer from double clicking anymore. Cool. Nice. So, anyways, with that, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. So, if you did enjoy this, uh, you can follow or subscribe. Uh, well, don't subscribe on Twitch, but I'm, I'm on YouTube where I re upload all of these if you miss it. Uh, apparently, as of Wednesday, Twitch is now deleting VODs that are one week old, which means I will literally have no VOD, well, I will only have one VOD up at a time, so you're not, you're not going to be able to see uh, any of the older stuff, unless you're on the YouTube. Um, yeah, no problem, it's, uh, it's been fun. Tomb Raider 2 is still... I'm amazed how neat it's going, although I apparently still get lost. I still can't figure out parts of the environment. I mean, almost got the whole stream without looking at it but... Uh, alas. Um, and yeah, for, for you folks, uh, have a good one, stay safe, eat your greens, uh, don't stay up too late, uh, or do, because you're watching tech announcements for products that you may or may not purchase, but, you know, technology is always interesting. It's about the spirit, it's about the drive, it's about what on earth someone decided to stick in a regular computer, and what they can do with it, so, have a good one everyone, see ya.